Horoscopes Astrology. I'm your host, KG Styles. Today I am uh, going to be reviewing the metaphysical meaning and purpose of the year 2015 with a look at the numerology and astrology. At the end of today's show, I thought I would um, pick three oracle cards uh, from uh, Dream Virtues, uh, three of her decks, uh, some of my favorites, for you to get an even deeper insight and support about what's unfolding for you in 2015. So uh, let's talk about the significance of the numbers at work, uh, both the positive, how to stay on the positive side, as well as, you know, how you can tell when you're going over into the more the negative side of vibration and what you can do about that so you keep it focused in a way that you give positive mean, meaning and frame things in a way that really has you operating from your greater self uh, and helping you evolve more into living from your greater self you know doing that ascension process so um, the uh, numbers, uh, the focus for this year, the 15 on the end of 2015, that's 1 plus 5. So the focus, 1 is your focus. That's the, the creative aspiration, the drive for this year um, is on the 5 is a very mental num number and it and it's re represents the mind. Uh, and so Mercury is its number one as Aries is the number of Aries is one so you're combining the drive this energy and passion with your mind and um, illuminates the mind so you'll be able to see things you'll be able to see attitudes judgments things maybe that you need to to uh, you move beyond you need to, to release or you could see that you know the higher way hopefully this is given you if you are doing that that's a contrast so you can see hey that's not not how where I want my mind to be the way to shift the mind so that you're focused more on a positive so you get a positive outcome uh, is focus on the love the one plus five equals six so six is the number of Venus and that's all about focusing your personal love energies on connecting in love with people, seeing with the eyes of love, uh, extending love in your communications and the way you perceive your perceptions that you look for uh, rather than reacting from the lower reactive mind that you're perceiving with the eyes of love. You look for, you know, and how you're contributing maybe to disharmony. So you want to contribute in a way that creates harmony. Not you want to be a doormat or anything. It's not about that. You're not absorbing other people's negativity. You're taking responsibility for whatever your vibration you're contributing. And uh, you know, focus on being of service, being of love, being in love and focusing on the service so that it's really not about you, your personal ego, not taking things personally. Don Miguel Ruiz in his Four Agreements uh, talks about not to take anything personally and this is definitely a year uh, to not take things personally, to uh, really be heart-centered, heart-based. Uh, as I said previous in other uh, uh, videos, this 2000 year we have moved into now is all about peace at the collective level. We are, and so we're going through a lot of correction of uh, patterns, ancestral patterns, we're clearing a lot of residue from these patterns that we've had where we've been in a struggle, we've been in polarity, we've been in separation. Now we're coming into unity consciousness where we're in relationship with ourselves not just others, but really whatever's going on with others and outside is really a mirroring of how much harmony we have within ourselves, how much we've been able to integrate and harmonize within our own selves, how much love and self-acceptance and forgiveness, you know, just acceptance 
that we accept ourselves, that we're willing to do, you know, we all have weak character traits that that's a part of the journey, the spiritual journey is to face our own darkness and bring it into the light. That's, that's what healing is all about. And, uh, you know, that's what we're here doing. We're here to experience and move towards experiencing wholeness and healing. So um, the the universal number for this 2015 is eight. So we're in an eight universal year. So this year, if you are doing this work of coming from service, coming from love, there are tremendous rewards, tremendous rewards uh, that are going to come in for you. Much more collaboration, that two energies really coming on more and more where we're in collaboration rather than the strife and struggle and competition that has that was precipitated so much through the 1000, the, the previous millennium. millennium. So um, this, as I see it, is the year of the heart-centered entrepreneur. Uh, and it's moving more and more away from and the rewards will not be there for people who are in the competition mode and there's going to be a mirroring of of lack you know if you're not focused on seeing how th everything is serving and how you're contributing to whatever is showing up in your life and to make the shifts within your own self and to release any blocks you have within yourself that is uh preventing you from experiencing a higher reality so um, of what's possible for you because life loves you and uh, you know it's it's seeing that life loves you you know that's and I think it, hopefully we're all moving into really getting that life loves us that it can't be otherwise and that things are happening for us always and if it looks contrary to that then there's inner some inner shifts and work and so many people have been doing this work at this point because once people are getting this at a collective level it makes it much easier for in other individuals coming along to make this shift and without much thought process uh, process about it so that's a really good thing is that there's so many way showers, so many people who have pioneered this for so many years and done this work that the the grooves are there in the collective. I think the most I would uh, really say is that surround yourself with people who are have maybe a little further ahead of you with having done this work of integration and wholeness and you resonate with them and they help you to focus in a way that helps you to do this inner shift, this work that needs to be, you know, if you have any more. And there's always going to be more of that that we're all, all doing. And some of us have, you know, have really graduated in some ways with doing this inner work. And then there's other, uh, you know, while there are still things still to shift that where we're just we need to reprogram, retrain ourselves, you know. So I think that's a lot of what's happening this year uh, because there's tremendous uh, opportunities, tremendous uh, rewards available if you're if you're if you're in alignment, if you've harmonized with this energy, you'll immediately get feedback that you're headed in the right direction. And Saturn as it leaves Scorpio the uh you know as it goes into sagittarius it's going to really be um helping you to make these changes in your beliefs and your attitudes and get in alignment and walk your talk you know if you've been talking it but you aren't in integrity it's going to really and i'm going to talk a little bit more i'm going to do a video just about the saturn in sagittarius square to uh, neptune that is coming up um, and I'll get into that in just a little bit um, so anyway let's see so that two energy is is spirit 
uh, being in relationship and it's multiplied by the zero, the two zero in 2015. So it's helping you with, uh, and the whole purpose of the 2000, the 2000, the first part until we get to uh, 2100, the next 100, almost 100 years still, is going to be on bringing this, doing a demonstration, actually manifesting this peace on earth that we're doing the initial work necessary for that. And then we'll go to higher octaves of this work. So um, the number one also in that 15 is spring energy. And it, and it relates to the wood energy of this year we're going into. We're going into the wood goat year. So it's uh, about drive, energy, initiative, uh, dynamic forward movement, taking action, so you're really encouraged to take action this year and to really trust and make those changes. Know that you are loved and supported and to not hold back, not hold yourself back. To release any feelings that you have, that any fears you have, face your fears. Do that work of uh, looking at your fears, whatever's holding you back. If you have anger, if you have resentment, whatever it is. You know, you're really, and we're going really also with this spirit. We're going into with the two energy, being in relationship. It is a time, and the 15-6, it is a time of being in, in touch with your emotions. To really express your emotions. To no longer suppress or repress your emotions. To find peace with your emotions. In a constructive way. In a positive way. Uh, so that healing can occur in your psyche and your your soul and your body because a, a lot of healing is just emotional healing it's healing your emotions Inner, healing you know emotions are your energy emotion that's blocked chi and so when you free up that chi when you free up that emotional energy you have health you have wholeness you're integrated you're at peace with yourself you found peace with yourself so the five is also about romance, children, creativity, joy. So this is a year for you to experience your creativity, express your creativity, to con connect more deeply with your own soul essence, your own ch childlike soul essence, to, you know, romance yourself, to see things more through the, the eyes of love you know, the romantic, not eyes of illusion, but where you see the, the positive in things, that you're willing to see things from a positive perspective, uh, from a heartfelt perspective, from a, a healing heart space. Because uh, the, the heart emanates a more frequency than, than, the, than the brain. And, you know, it's a resonant field that you transmit. And that's what people are attracted to. So the more you can get into your own love vibration from your heart, what really resonates with your own heart, uh, then the more you're going to attract the circumstances and the people uh, who are going to, you're going to collaborate with. So... Again, uh, the sixth energy is the Venus. The heart energy is also Earth energy. Venus is rules uh, Earth. It also is a ruler of Libra, which is an air, that five energy, which is air. You know, Mercury is an air kind of an energy. It's a more mental energy. That's a better way of saying it, maybe. So, it, you know, that's the way to unify. That's the way to bring unity uh, and experience all the prosperity that's available for you in this year of eight, universal year of eight. Uh, to find out your own year, personal year, although I have to say because we're really seeing more how we're all connected and the collective uh, is really coming on and we've been doing all this collective work of healing the ancestral karma, the ancestral patterns and releasing those so we're not repeating those anymore. Um, the collective is a really powerful, strong force. What is going on on the global level, a lot of us are experiencing directly in our personal life. That's 
that's just what is because of that recognition of our of our unity of our that we are all connected but if you do want to look at your what your personal year number is um, if you add that eight universal year to your birthday uh, month and day the month and day say for instance if you're born born June 5th that would equal the number 11 which is number two so if you added two to eight you get ten which is a instant manifestation number the 10 so if you're born June 5th this is definitely a year when you can have instant manifestation of your desires what it is and you know the desires that are inspired they're not just uh, coming out of your head as you know it's an inspired it's totally different than having something that's an initiative from some outside in where you you're you have motivation for achieving something that's external to you but an inspiration actually comes from within you it's like a directive it's a calling you have passion for it and um, there's a lot of faith involved with it because you may not see how you can do it but you go and you act on it and then things show up to support it um, so uh, anyway uh, as I said, the 2015 year is the year of the wood goat or the wood sheep. And um, the um, I've mentioned before in my previous video about that the wood goat is this blending of that spring energy of Aries where Uranus has been these past several years. We've had this square. And then the goat is, uh, of course, the animal totem for uh, Saturn. Uh, which is rules the sixth house which is where Pluto has been uh, during this square so this is a time when the differences will begin to integrate these differences we will begin to find a way through our differences and most of this is through our own internal shifts how these energies are operating within us and how we need to change so that we can create harmony in our lives. So, um, all right, and then, um, you know, Saturn is Sagittarius, which I mentioned earlier, uh, is all about walking your talk. It's about being in integrity and making it real. And this year, uh, that's why there's going to be so much powerful manifestation. This is a year of making it real. And uh, you're going to get lots of opportunities to step forward, uh, step out of your comfort zone when you're growing, and there's a lot of fast growing here. There's going to be more stability, so it'll you know you the nervous system won't be quite as charged up this year as it's been. So uh, you know doing things to kind of keep the uh, anxiety down because there's. You know, that's just a part of the, the anxiety. That's just free electric energy that's looking for a place to go. And so, you know, definitely doing things like your, your emotions are magnetic. So the more you can be in touch with your emotions, the more that will help you to ground that free electrical energy, that free charge, Uranus. You know, it's uh, in Aries. That's the whole, I think we're really moving into, you know, this is another year of the spiritual entrepreneur. Uh, the, you know, the, I think we're all becoming uh, entrepreneurs. We're all going to be taking responsibility uh, for, for our, our um, source of income, what we have, uh, you know, as far as how we earn our income, what our livelihood, right livelihood is. So, you know, that entrepreneurial pioneering spirit is just going to be coming on more and more and more while uh, Uranus continues its journey through Aries and breaking up any resistance, looking for someone else to take responsibility or come in to be your savior or you know you are your savior you have 
the divine Holy Spirit within you, inspiring you, guiding you. You are perfectly guided every moment to be, because from this, uh, this from Holy Spirit, the Spirit within you is connected with everything and everyone, and it can, I mean, it's great to have plans, especially a vision. Having a vision for yourself, where you're headed, is especially important. Having some kind of a plan and taking action regularly is also important. But then you need to take feedback and be in co-creation because things are not going to go according to plan. You can make much more rapid progress if you're willing to be flexible and adaptable and see things as working for you that maybe there's a better way. Life has your back. Life loves you. And so don't get totally attached to how it looks or how it's coming about because you know the way spirit works could be you know very circuitous. It's not this direct A to Z. You know it could be lining up all kinds of things and all kinds of things you know like I said to see have you frame things in a way that or ask the question, how could this be working for me? How, you know, how could this be a source of my good? And see things working mutually, that there's a congruence and alignment at work, that there is harmony. There isn't chaos and disorder at the heart of the universe. I mean, if you look at the seasons, if you look at the planets, I mean, talk about order. I mean, it's massive, the kind of order and harmony that's created for the most part, I mean, there are little things here and there that go on, you know, as things shift and change. We've got to, you can't just be totally static. You've got to, you know, but we have an organic system that's been working. We don't no, no, don't even know for how many eons, you know, and it's an ever-expanding system. It's always expanding and growing. So, uh, anyway, I wanted to talk just a little bit about this Saturn square Neptune. I will be releasing, I'm going to have an even deeper look at this, uh, but it's occurring in 2015. And I think this is a part of the making it real, you know, where you can have, uh, you know, phenomenal, prosperous opportunities out of the blue, extraordinary circumstances show up for you if your heart's in the right place and you're, you're seeing from the, the eyes of love, working in collaboration with people. So, um, so we have the first of the year, we start to feel this uh, square begin to happen between Neptune, Saturn, and it will actually, it starts in February, it really starts to amp up, and then uh, Saturn will station retrograde at 4 degrees Sagittarius on March 14th, and so then it will start moving off. And then, um, you know, Saturn will uh, station direct, I forget the exact date when it stations direct, I think it's in June, um, but then on November 26th, Saturn at four degrees, wait a minute, I, I had the date wrong there earlier. The exact date is March, let's see, I, is it? Yes, it's, yeah, it's at four degrees. I'm sure I wrote these dates down. It just seems kind, seemed kind of odd that it was four degrees again where it reached. So, but I, like I say, I'm going to have a deeper look and really go into this. This four degree is, this four is very important because it's the number of manifestation. It's uh, I see it as the number of Saturn, the manifester, where you bring it into, it's got the, it's the four legs on the table. It's stability. It create, it helps to give a foundation. The four is the number of foundation. It's where the fourth house is your foundation. It's your roots. So, uh, so anyway, it's going to be at four degrees Sagittarius. It's going to perfectly square Neptune and Pisces just after the Gemini full moon on November 25th, which is also at four degrees. So there is a T-square forming between Saturn, Neptune, and this full moon. So these are going to be extremely important areas of your life where there's going to be significant breakthrough 
uh, on the world level, on individual levels, if you have any of these four numbers active in your personal chart, this is going to be an extraordinary day, this November 25th. In the U.S., that's the day before Thanksgiving. So as I said, the number four is the number of stability, and it helps you to make things real. So any Neptune can be illusion. So any false dreams, false hopes that you've had. Uh, Gemini is, again, that five, you know, ruled by Mercury that we're in, 2015. It's, you know, it's releasing something in the lower mind, maybe an attitude, a judgment, where you can, you know, you've got to break through some of those old, um, those old attitudes, judgments, and all judgment is self-judgment. So ultimately, you know, any judging you've been doing is really, and so it's only going to make you feel bad about yourself. I've talked about that in other videos as well. So, uh, so you're letting go of what isn't working, and this whole year. I mean, you're, you're getting a, a, a pre-knowing of this here, the first February until March when Saturn goes retrograde. You're getting a pre-visioning of exactly what you need to let go of. It's going to dip back into Scorpio. And so you're going to really have, you know, once again, it's in the later degrees. But if there's anything for any of you in that, that house where Scorpio is that's lingering, any last residues of shadow tissue uh, that could be undoing, could be a source of undoing for you, that's preventing or blocking you from realizing uh, your highest possibilities, your highest potentials, the love in your heart, whatever may be blocking you from the love, expressing the love in your heart and what you came here to do. You know, you're, it's going to get, you know, it's an opportunity to clean that out of there. And like I say, you know, so many people are doing this work now. The the grooves, you know, I think that that we're just seeing these last vestiges, you know, surface that are being let go of. And you know, the it always makes a lot more noise. You know, the stuff that <laughs> stuff that is harmonious peaceful and working it out self out through collaborating that it doesn't get a lot of press it doesn't make a lot of noise so it's not as in your face you know so um, meditation is really good this year meditation is always good but um, any doing any doing any kind of uh, mental science being in touch with emotional healing this week really going for your dreams, making it real, being honest with yourself, being in integrity with yourself. All those things are really supported and there is like stellar returns uh, happening. You know, this eight year, uh, you can see massive returns if you're willing to just go for it and uh, let go and trust the universe has your back. So Anyway, I hope this information is helpful to you. Um, I do want to pull a, a few cards now. Um, so first I'm, I'm going to pull from the Angel Therapy card deck of Dreams. I don't know if you know this. This one. I don't know if any of you use Doreen Virtue's cards, but here's, let's see. Archangel Michael. So, Archangel Michael is the card, and it says you're working very closely with this powerful Archangel who's protecting and guiding you through this year. So, uh, Archangel Michael is known for giving you courage. Archangel Michael really helps cor cut cords of attachment to past ways of being or doing or. Uh, any fears you might have, any cords of attachment, you can call on Archangel Michael uh, and he will help you to more focus in the love energies that are available for you this year. So Archangel Michael, a lot of protection available for you. So just just call on it, okay? It's there for you. All right. 
That was a powerful. I think he's actually the first card in that, as I recall. He's the first number one in angel therapy cards. Now we're going to um, healing with the fairies. And this, you know, I think really works well with the Earth, the Saturn energies, uh, the more Earth-based energies, the elemental energies for helping you make it real this year for yourself. Whereas uh, the angel cards are really more with the, the, the spiritual, you know, connecting with the spiritual, seeing with the angel eyes, seeing from the spiritual heart-based level, and releasing anything that may be blocking or preventing you from seeing that. So anyway, what did we have here? Problem resolved. So that's a really... So know that the fairies have your back. And any problems you face this year, if you're just willing to have the courage to move forward, that they will be, the, the fairies are helping you to um, resolve them. You know, problem resolved. So just see a positive outcome. Whatever happens, no matter how you may, at first it may seem like, is going one way, you know, just have a positive, frame it in the positive and see how can this be working for me? How can this, you know, how can this be moving me forward to realizing, you know, what are these inspired dreams I have for myself? And our last one is the Ascended Masters, which um, the Ascended Masters you know, walked upon the earth, and they really help with a bridge, with helping you to ascend in your consciousness, to elevate your consciousness, to raise your standards in this whole making it real, because that a lot of times is what the issue is. You need to raise your own standards for yourself, and you need to look at the things that are preventing you from living from a higher standard. And of course, on the material level, that could be a higher standard of physical plane living for yourself, you know, because the material really reflects where you're at spiritually. So when you raise your, your standards for yourself on a spiritual level, and, uh, then you also experience uh, a higher material circumstance for yourself. And I can't believe this card came out. El Moria. I've been working with El Moria for much of this year. He has been working with me, helping clear and shield uh, my energy. He is so incredible with releasing old patterns. He really helps to clear those old. He helps you have. El Moria was from a very wealthy uh, family in Persia. I think it was Persia. And he was an ascended master, and he understood a lot of the laws of manifesting. And um, he, I mean, he's incredible for helping you free your energy up so that you can really move on and be manifesting. Because he, he understands about the law of attraction, how to manifest on a material level. And... Uh, it's amazing this card came up. I've shifted, I've shuffled and shuffled this card deck, and um, it hasn't actually been in the deck for some time because I've been working with him on a daily basis for months now. And uh, I put it back in because I figured, well, he should be in there. And that he uh, came out is just, uh, I don't know, it must be my, I don't know if it's my, I just, you know, this is such a gift that he's shown up no matter why it happened. Because uh, he is, he's amazing with helping free up your energy. So call on El Moria. He will free you up from any blocks uh, to realizing good for yourself on a material level. And uh, help you clean out whatever is going on with this raising your standards. So you see more for yourself. Because that, that's really, you know, you've got to have this future vision for yourself where you're headed. 
you don't see it for yourself, you won't create it. So El Moria will help you uh, with clearing yourself. You won't be a, you know, especially people who are empaths, you can absorb other people's, you feel other people's energy, you're empathic. And so even very well intentioned and, and, and you know, for me, the best way to shield yourself is using, I, I use white light. I just, you know, it's not really a, sh a shield so much as it's just keeping your own frequency and energy up so elevated, so high that, you know, the, it, it, the darkness is, is brought into the light. There is no more darkness because on the spiritual level, there is no darkness. There's just light. Everything's light. Everything, every, everybody's aware of everything on the spiritual level. So there is no darkness. There are, are no shadows in the spiritual world. So that's the, the white light. Uh, working with the white light can really help you. Um, so you don't work with that white light so you don't absorb any, you know, you can feel other people's feelings. You know, you're not going to probably, if you're an empath, you're not going to stop being empathic. That's one of your gifts. But um, the more you can elevate your frequency, the more you can clear your own self, use that white light, then you won't be absorbing uh, any, any negativity. You'll be able, it, it just won't even phase you. It, it just won't even phase you. So, all right, well, that's it. That's all I'm seeing. And right now, um, I will uh, be back in touch. Uh, with another astrology update soon. Really want to do the uh, Saturn into Sag square Neptune. I think that's going to be such an important transit for shaking loose any dross or anything. It's just going to cut you free. It's going to cut everything free on the Earth plane, on the planet Earth. We're going to get real about things. So um, anyway, I'm always sending you my blessings of love. Uh, you always have angelic support and the support of the Ascended Masters, so call upon it. And until next time, relax, enjoy your life, and stay connected.